so welcome to this morning. <laughs> uh, the summary is uh, yesterday's activity. So I um, opened up uh, my monthly project after half a year of uh, silence and uh, started building a connection to any JDBC database. Um, I created a JDBC database connector entity and service, uh, connected the service um, the, the init function and I just uh, started typing code into uh, the init procedure. I was able to uh, connect to the database, um, receive uh, the list of tables uh, from the database and created types uh, on Montreux side. Um, the importance of, of this step is that from this point on, um, any information in that database uh, is the same as any other thing uh, in Montreux. As you saw, uh, the type is exactly the same um, as uh, the, the JDBC connector, for example, and, and everything else uh, in Montreux. So in, in Java, for example, you say that uh, everything is an object. In Montreux, everything is an ent entity. Uh, and as I have created a type, uh, I'm able to handle uh, any object in the database or record as you like it uh, as, uh, as an entity uh, in Montreux. Um, if you use uh, standard uh, connections like uh, Hibernate or whatever, uh, you have to create uh, source codes for um, for uh, having the data content of a record and uh, lots of housekeeping codes uh, to uh, access uh, the content from the database or use uh, some libraries like, like um, Hibernate or um, similar things. As you saw in Montreux, you, don't, you need nothing of this. Uh, you just start to build up uh, this connection and uh, now you have a, have a system. Uh, that, that handles the data. Um, during the process, you had a glimpse of how uh, you can work with Montreux. Like uh, when I created the JDBC connector um, type, uh, at the point I just uh, moved the, um, the configuration settings of the connection uh, from the source code, the initial um, test source code uh, to parameters. And as I did that, as you saw, I didn't even have to change, uh, <laughs> I didn't even have to restart uh, the running application. I just added the new parameters and uh, changed the source code and I could handle uh, the, the new information uh, in the running system. Um, the same way, although I did not really demonstrate that, uh, I had maybe a crash um, because I made a mistake in uh, where to store uh, the content of the of the database. So I had to refactor uh, the the JDBC that data and the actual uh, test uh, database information. Um, I had to create a different separation, and because I made a mistake, um, I actually had to restart the, the building of the whole, whole uh, structure, the meta structure. Uh, it took about less than a half hour uh, to, to restart that uh, from scratch. So it was not a real um, showstopper. Of course, um, this is because the whole Montreux system is uh, maybe a form of uh, development the result of a four-month development and it's already obsolete. I just used this version uh, for uh, feature collection and uh, I will build uh, yet another, I just, just will integrate uh, the experience into the new uh, system. But now I can use Montreux for, uh, for my actual project. So after this uh, introduction, uh, let's open up the Eclipse again. Uh, of course, I uh, committed uh, my changes to GitHub uh, because now I will do a bit of refactor here immediately because it's uh, quite uh, ugly, of course, uh, 
this uh, uh, spaghetti uh, JDBC connector. So the first thing is that I have to change it. Uh, I plan to keep um, using just one class uh, for a while. Of course, it should be separated, like uh, the user information should go other way, elsewhere. Uh, the JDBC connector and the actual database uh, should be separated, but right now I will not uh, deal with that because um, actually I need uh, the data content um, of, of any JDBC database. And um, um, I collect the features, but uh, uh, the final implementation or, or better implementation will come uh, in, in another project. So, uh, the first thing is uh, that I would like to do is, of course, uh, I want to remove the, uh, the connection uh, from, from here. Uh, so, this will be a member, of course. And put the close. I, I would like to have... A, Mm -hmm. I would need a shutdown management. How is that? System. Mm -hmm. Okay, how is that? Um, shut down hook. <clears throat> Runtime, very nice. Okay. Um, because of course, of course, I need uh, to ensure that um, there will be no problem, uh, there will be no open connection. Uh, in case of a problem of, or if I forget to close uh, the JDBC connector. So that should be um, um, shut down. Oops. Very nice, and uh, I have to check if I have created some some service. No, not yet. Um, I always create these kind of things, but right now it's it's not available. Uh, so I would need. Um, to create a static static uh, this should be a weak set weak weak hash map mm. or set of weak references whichever Not. How do you work? Set a good answer, big. Okay. So then it's, it will be a simple set of weak reference to a connection um, new hash set And when you create uh, 
Okay, this should go to the end because right now I will work with the uh, init and the release and I think I will move the release forward because that will be just hmm. or JDBC connector so then Let's make it simple and ugly. Um, for the preference best JDBC connector. JDBC connector T equals get if active release. And that should be surrounded in a try catch with catching throwable. Uh, and dust utils. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's another version where I uh, did the actual uh, management, but So I just log the exception for now. The important point here is that I have to catch every exception. So I catch the throwable and not the exception. And that the uh, release calls should continue uh, regardless of any exception uh, during the process. So that's fine. And what I also want to do is uh, in the active release, I want to say that if con is open, is, is closed. <laughs> okay, then it's, if it's not closed, <clears throat> then, oh, Okay. That's not a good idea, then, because I want to either commit or roll back. So I'd rather say that this guy should have a private Well, if there is no cause, then it should do a um, if if no equals cause con 
commit. Otherwise, roll back con close and uh, con no and of course I have to do the null check here so if no then I should do the whole thing <coughs> nice so then release con and it should be should then be no and uh, during this whole process activities that's uh, release con null and that's catch throwable release con the cause so in this way I just uh, managed to uh, close the connection properly So, now I want to think that it will work. Uh, the important part here is, of, of course, now I have to uh, create a new function, which is createCon. Create con and if the connection is null or connection is closed, then I have to do what I did previously in Earth environment my type and so on uh, during the init I should, of course, uh, collect my actual attributes. So uh, the attributes should be, of course, also in here or out here. And I would also need a uh, update params function. The update params is this thing here.
including the driver class initialization. This is how we go. And uh, um, at this point, attributes clear so uh, I will update uh, the attributes um, factory tables uh, that's a different story but of course it also it must also go out here and that means I need the my type and my my unit and target type also uh, the target type as I have changed it I uh, don't need uh, an initialization because that's fine uh, but the my unit is something that I have to uh, sorry this is just my unit and it is not set yet and my unit is sub set in the <coughs> parameter update It's connecting to database um, is not interesting anymore. So the active starts with update params. Now, the connecting to the database part comes here. Um, I don't need the catalogs and the tables. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, so what I do here is, of course, I copied uh, the original code, so I only do the connection. There you go. This is what I do in the create connection. Update params, uh, create connection. And now the question is um, Do I still have uh, the functionality? Okay, the string db name should also come here. that's um, the DB name is in the update params who sets the DB name in the create con so yes that's the point where I initialize the database name 
and I have this uh, part here. Create con, name it opt create con, just to make sure that. I can safely call it any time. <coughs> and I think I should not uh, do anything at this point. Because now I just have to start the application again to check if I have destroyed anything. Oh, by the way, of course, I have to start the uh, SQL server as well before making a fool of myself. So I just load the Sakila DB. But before sending the init message to the JDBC connector, I have to launch the instance, which is here. It is running. What a surprise. <clears throat> okay, then it's fine. Let's see if I'm still okay. Okay, it successfully collected all the information that I needed from tables, columns, and I also have the primary and foreign keys uh, in the data table or uh, in the database, which is of course important to um, build up uh, the meta structure of my classes. I should also check if in the circular DB I still have the limited amount of items. Maybe I should delete this entity just to make it cleaner. So I have uh, 18 entities. Uh, most of them are the tables that uh, came from the database. It works the same way, and if I send the init again and again, uh, the number of the entities don't change because the uh, factory is not uh, creating new items. Very nice. So now the next step is well, it will be quite small <laughs> in the end. What do I want to do? I want to collect meta information uh, for the tables that will be used to To build up the meta structure. What can I do here? I want to know uh, which are the uh, 
primary keys, which are the foreign keys. What kind of information do I have about the foreign keys? Um, that will be very interesting. Foreign key, film language, language ID, language film, language, language ID, film language ID, foreign key field language. Very, very informative. Of course, it must be. And I have to process this information and remember. So, to accomplish this, I will need an inner class where I just collect this information. So, class of table info. Uh, should contain the actual uh, entity type that I just create. Um, I would need um, the primary key, primary key, maybe primary key name. Primary key name. Uh, I would have a set set, but this set uh, should have a foreign key information. <coughs> Which will collect, connect, sorry, um, table info info. Um, I should just say table name for no table info T I. Um, master TI detail mm. bum, bum, bum. And uh, this foreign key info will come from Theoretically, it should be a factory because inside a table info, the foreign key is, yeah, that's it. So that's a factory uh, that, that points to FK infos. Info. And here I will have a constructor that will use the result set. Result set.
Let's reload this information and I have this thing where um, yeah because it's already available I will use it return new F key info key and that's hints Not set. Oops. I know that it's it's not very nice, but very quick. So now I have this, and Table info. Should I keep the table name just for fun? If it's already available, why not? <coughs> table name. So in the table info. What I do here um, when I create the actual table, these are the interesting things. This is also a result set. So this will work like this, that I I'm inside here, so actually I will use the table name instead of the original idea, that will be nice key. And the result set, I will send the result set there. And database metadata that's something that I will use all the time so this also goes out here under the connection and I will create it during the create con so this uh, now I metadata metadata should be null immediately very nice and I use the DB metadata here just for fun and so the metadata is available from the connection and that's good because This part here can go to the table info constructor. This is where I say the ID will be. Table name RS table.
Table of Death, DB Names Table, This is the factory. This is something I remove from there and come over here. My table type entity is an ID. ID. My unit, that's very nice. I don't want this anymore. Of course, that's also not interesting. But this is the result set. Can, can you throw an exception? You can't throw an exception from here. <clears throat> Surround it now for catch throwable, and that's just. So I am able to uh, create my table type entity here in this constructor. Uh -oh. The problem is that the meta layer uh, should be updated in the table instance all the time. <coughs> so that means that is nice because that is that belongs to construction. But this part here goes somewhere else. Just let's see. That also means that I don't need uh, the the result set in the construction part. Really, I should not because uh, the construction comes okay so that's a private uh, void void db metal from the result set it can throw an exception uh, throws so I don't need the try catch because anyway it's a funny thing. So in here factor table infos is what I have and in it a table info instead of a desk entity. Very nice. I will return a new <coughs> table info key. 
this is how I do it. And in the beginning, when I connect add in my params table equals put new table info uh, table I That means I use the table ID here that is a unique ID in the table. Mm That should be table ID. This is Table ID equals So I don't need the uh, unique identification anymore, which is kind of important. So I don't uh, need that uh, to have a global identifier. If it doesn't have a global identifier, that means I don't have to play uh, with the actual name. But name it's just uh, yeah, it's just a theoretical thing that uh, the there would be no uh, name conflicts because surely there would be name name conflicts. That means. I should use the original table name and should not play with it. It will be exactly the same name as it comes from the database. Now it will, of course, uh, make it a problem with the actual content, but Later on, table info, table info, ti, table infos, get to an rs. And this is not what we do now, but we say that ti load db meta rs. And as I moved 
this part of the code up to the constructor to the load db meta right now so i don't need these lines here anymore i will just dump it better the opt create com <clears throat> how about moving this thing up to the opt create com why not here so I can uh, dump it once when I actually connect uh, to the database and I do the getting tables part I can just forget about that and now I do the most important thing that I get uh, the table names and the table infos I load it and I will use the load db meta. In fact, it doesn't really need it. And so it's table name again. Actually, what information do I have? Maybe, yeah, something. Something like category and data. I should just dump everything from from the table just for fun. So forget about this string builder tables. Uh, I don't care. Uh, what I do here is nice, nice and easy. Sets RS, so I have all the information from the tables. All right, so now what I do here uh, in the init phase, I call the update params and I will try to collect every entities that came from the database originally which are the succula prefixed entities now as i will move on i will create new types without the prefix and after the first round, I will not create any more of that. Of course, this doesn't uh, go because I have uh, uh, seriously refactored the thing. Mm. I 
remove the global dependency, but um, it shouldn't mean a problem. So I can just close it now. Let's start it again. <coughs> I load the Sakila DB. I have my entities. Oh, forgot to commit. Sorry. Well, it doesn't matter. Now, what happened is that I have the new types directly, but also indirectly, I have added the new uh, prefixed type. And if I run it again, what happens? It duplicates the items. Why is that? It should not create This part, uh, the ref processor, it should not run every time. It should only run for the first time when when you first connect. To the database, and later on it should not do anything. And the other question was that. The fact table infos is now here. It's a new factory. But is in you info is there any other problem with that no then I have my problem in the table info instead which says Yeah. I should have two constructors here. One comes with uh, the table name and the other comes with the, uh, the actual entity.
if I call this thing, I will need to initialize the table type it's only this other point and when I At this point, it should create, but <clears throat> at this point, it should not. I just registers because it's already there with this name how about that Circular database, and in the circular database units, I have different identities. Now, let's remove it. Create entity and commit. Maybe it will not. Range. Anyway, very nice. And so now, if I load it back, I have eighteen. And it is very good. Now I want to send this message to the JDBC connector. And what's going on is that I have the new types created. And if I send the message again, they remain the same. Very nice. I should delete these entities. Can I do it in one round? Oh, very interesting. Can I just close for the JDBC connector for now? And I want to say that circular pin category, circular rental, circular store, and of course, these are the things that not so. convenient because of the test level of this whole monitor environment of course the multi select option would be a good idea here but never mind i just 
question. It seemed to work. How about committing? Uh, it was successful. Uh, I can see it from uh, changing the timestamp here to 10.30, which is OK. So how about closing and open it? it again just to make sure that everything is fine do an update on the succulent db succulent db unit contains 80 entities now i send the same message again to the jdbc connector it connects to the database executed and see how yeah the number of the types haven't changed so what we have done so far is that we have refactored uh, the the structure of source code uh, we now use table info and primary key info information So what I would like to do at this point is that in the columns So the load DB net actually doesn't use this result set at all, if I'm correct. No, it does not. So that means uh, I don't have to call this function here. Okay, so just for let's make it final for sure and the table entity also, but Boolean. Ah. Why? Verified. Let's go DB verified. When I connect. <clears throat> what I should do is mm, table info fact table info. 
pulse. Then it's working this way. Values. DB verified. False. Um, DB verified. True. This is how we go. And another run in the end after we have processed all the columns for the tables is that if db verified load db meta This is how we go. And at this point, I really want to handle the content of this result set because now what I want to do is <coughs> to No, uh, I will just stop here in a breakpoint and I will see the column names. Did I save it? Yes. So I started again. And I want to see what columns do I have in this result set, the columns result set. So let's step into and <clears throat> and these are the column names. Nice. Table categories and table name, column name, data type. Type name. Small int unsigned. Column size, buffer length, decimal digits, nullable, column death, oh my god, this is quite a complicated content here. Um, So that's the actor ID, is the column name. 
So practically, I should Uh, it would be very nice to know all the information that is available. inside this beautiful, beautiful result set. So let's see. Instead of dumping, I have the table name, and I want to say that it's just peak. Table info. Peak table name. If. That's very nice. And in the register column, uh, of course, I would need a column name for, which will be quite similar to the table info. But right now, I want to say that it will be a column name and also a map string object Column info. That's result set from uh, the column will be available. So Data dust GDBC uterus map map from RS from hmm. the 
Oh, of course. GDPC connector. <coughs> Method string object results set from the call names and Okay, map free map um What? Oh, exception. Throws. That's very nice because in this way What is your problem? Oh, that is your problem. Mm -hmm. And it should not throw an exception. Try catch throwable and just for fun. Put call a so in this way I can do this and for the first run. when you first access the columns results set at this point call def cause Then I go with the result set metadata, and that's what I need. Oh well, that can move out to a function. Refactor. Method. Names. Okay, all column names. Throws exception.
very nice. And so, called of course, equals JTPC appears get all column names without set. So now I will remember <coughs> all the columns and then I will just change and uh, reduce the number of columns that I need. Register columns. Register columns. What I will do that I will now Okay, so uh and column info I collect all the information in the table info. I will also need a factory for all the columns call table info column info Columns Column Info Column Info New Column Info And that's Fine Register column, which will be let's say. Columns get yes. Uh, call name get string unfortunately I don't know it anymore. But I will know it soon. Until then let's say that it's called column name. How about giving us close? Okay. Now I can. Oh yes, that's the point where I can check if the connector is released. Because I now break. Well, I don't see.
take a look at it. So I open up the Sakura Daily. At this point, of course, I have no connection because I have not inited anything. So if I close now, nothing happens. I start it again. Load up the connector and I also do my actual operation. Uh, oh, it just executed. <laughs> Just take a look at it. So I have now uh, the table infos factory. In the content, I have a table info. In the table info, I have columns, actor ID, first name, and so <laughs> And so I see that the actor ID Wow Wow The color name guess was perfect and I know all the information for all the columns in here Wow I like it. So yeah, I have all the information. Let's let it go. And now I'm really interested in if I close the application <clears throat> Do I have that shutdown hook firing? No. What's happened here? And unfortunately, I have forgotten to add myself <laughs> to this but if there is any problem with the connection management um, I can probably cre create an open multiple connections so it was a bad idea was a bad idea uh, in the connection list I should have connections this should be a connection and this thing here uh, should have a No, 
know this previous connection is a bad approach here. Release connection. Private static. This is how we go, and that is and in the end, no, at the beginning, as I was able to create a connection and it works. This is how I do it. Oh, so no. And in the release, active. This is nice, just because right now I have lots of open connections to my MySQL database server. Unfortunately, because I have forgotten to properly manage this. Release con. But now... But now I should have this automatic release mechanism working. Let's see. I just do an init. And now I close the application. And I have the release gone. Call, I go into. Wow. Uh oh. The question is, how do I know? Connection is out of limit or not. Get out of commit. And it is not. Auto commit. Then I do this commit rollback thing. Let's see.
Station. And I forgot to because I just forgot to do this. Update. Do the process. And close the application. doesn't come. Because it was at the bad location. Because I should not put this together. If not how to commit These are the funny things that is so easy to mess up. Oh, finally, database connection closed. Very nice. So now we have a nicer uh, communication with the MySQL database. Um, and I already have the uh, column information for each column. So, how about trying to understand what information will I need when I just the breakpoint here. So what I have here I have this actor ID and see the column data 
data type SQL data type type name is smoothened unsigned. Yes. So what I would like is to have um, a connection between the SQL data types I mean their names and my attribute types. In order to do that, I need to I need to update my my method layer a bit later because now I should have something quite similar to what I have in here it's quite similar to the activity table info, this column info. Right now I want to There we go. <coughs> and in the column info thing, if I don't have the entity, I want to create the entity. It should work the same way. And I would need the table info as well. It's all this thing.
داخلي There you go. Table info. Table. This is how you construct it. And then I go here. Register column. And there you go with the this. <coughs> Come on, info. Table info. This is how you go. If I create it right now, of course it will not. At this point, probably I will already have, and it is just like this one. Um, so when I already have the table entered, I have to check if the table entities and it is dust meta link The source not ready. I 
and columns new column info. And on the other hand, of course, when I have this, then the e column I create a new attribute definition and I will not need to unit because the identifier will be this one and column metal ints at the parent will be the table info okay e table And then in this way, uh, the attributes will appear just let this thing go now so I can do a safe shutdown with nice DB connection closed and now I'm interested in this one but also this one run it again So I now load the circular db and send the init message to the connector and the e table. Is the actor type and the color name is actor ID, and I will just create new attribute definitions for each of them. Let's see how we go. We have the circular DB unit. I have the unit entities, and if I show the type actor, it has has the four attributes. And if I check, for example, the address table, I have the attribute definitions. Yes, all the attribute definitions from from the database. Now the question is if the automatic uh, commit mechanism works or not. I ran the commit, it updated the time, 
and see the succulent db <laughs> it has now 108 uh, that's very interesting from stuff and this active come from the customer well this also says that uh, that this is not really nice okay try to make everything even worse check if the initialization phase works fine or not do some problem no no problem What happened here? I didn't get any call. Why is that? Create con reuse. What's the problem? Show me again. Register column. Let's see. Call names. Columns get. Oh, because the columns already contains that column, so I don't call anything. Oh, very nice then. So that's fine for one round. I again close my content. DB connection closed very nice.
So let's try it again. So now I run the database connection again. Okay, the Oh, that's a surprise. Uh, the automatic unit connection was not set up, which is practically good because I just want to do some fun again. No, 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 no. That's just one thing. I would also want to set the column type for each attribute to um, <clears throat> dust metal link no not metal link Data. at def type values identifier no that's the value dust meta links at def type to identifier. So right now every column that I detect in the database uh, will be set to string type. That's just for uh, temporal. Of course, so now I send the init message to the connector. It now Sorry. What is it? Was I able to detect Wow, it's really interesting. Okay, so it's a type after I have attribute definitions, but where? It's just not set. Is not added. The containing unit is not set. But then where are you? I don't really know. But anyway, uh, the funny part here is that I have now loaded the types uh, from the database. And so, as this is a type. It works exactly the same way as any other type, so I can create a new actor like this. This is now an actor, and I can say that and I put this new actor of mine into my beautiful Sakira DB unit. <clears throat> Maybe I just press a comment. Close. Start again. I'm still a bit a 
scared about. Where my thing is. And I have my beautiful actor here, as I just created. So, the next thing, I think before uh, moving forward, Uh, I should be able to run a SQL select. Don't you think? How would that go? <clears throat> of course, it would be would not be really nice uh, to uh, let custom SQL commands running. I want to create a new command that a SQL command, but it should not be a command because it's just a parameter of the um, of the process. Okay, keep keep it in, on the simplest level. So I just want to say that I will create a new message. Can I copy a message like this? Well, it's just as bad as it was. <laughs> okay. So, put the message type on, uh, make it identified. Protest. And uh, the command should be or evaluate, evaluate or process. Hmm? Process. So I want this to be the process command and it should also be a text <sighs> type. It has one attribute. This is the text string. Very nice. 
so I just end here and I say that um, select everything from um, actor. And let's put this in exactly what we do zoom out as a unit entity. And also as a unit name entity. Can I just make sure can I commit it? It looks fine. see persistentness of this process. Oh yes, it is here. Very nice. So um I will have this message here. Test UTS get message value. This is test text. Components text adds text string is okay false. Theoretically, this will be the con. statement okay um jdbc run sql create statement execute query let's see create statement statement SQL statement and it is very and JDPC utils dump results set rs <laughs> that would be so funny if it works for first round uh, i didn't even
So now I open up my favorite database and I say that I can send a process message to the JDBC connector with a proper select. See if it works. Now the question. It's so nice, but I forgot. So I have an all pointer exception, of course, because I have forgotten to initialize. Oops. Of course, I should have made it automatic, but uh, that uh, with the, the opt create gone and everything, but I don't want to play with that now. See it again. So I get the query, execute it, and dump. And it actually works. Really interesting. Okay, let's see. Um, JTPC utils now, of course, because the dump results that should just can you just. Uh, Give a header. Tab, and this is also tab. That's it, and if I run this again, then it should have a header as well. Actor ID, first name, last name, last update. That's cool. Now, what I'm really interested in, I would like to know what is the primary key. Yeah, 
no, no, no. Now I only want to say that um, metadata. data and get table name One, uh, let's now just for fun. And Table name that would be a peak, of course. Info and I should. that um, Was now let's say that uh, no, that that would be in the in the process of this thing. C equals column count and what I do here is utils access entity Do it like this. Okay, so uh, first of all, String ID equals get RS get string get by get string get long get short um, okay, get object one, 
to string. That will be the ID. Uh, I create a factory. That's of course, <laughs> it's too, too funny, but I just can't resist here. Um, This is a past entity table data. And this is E table and to identify the local is uh, Generic links connected owner is a table and I return my entity. So this is how I connected. To the table, its own type, and I have given an identified local. So the same way, I want to say that the, this is the ID, and TPL ID equals. Um, No, it's it's good as is. Table data get ID. This is how I get the ID, and now I process the columns of. Um, entity array equals new dust entity array 
of CC for Column name e plus one uh, x e equals table info columns big column. That is actually the attribute definition. So when I process the content of the result set, I actually do something like this. Um, Value equals RS get object and I want to say that I call a set value on my entity where it's actually the at a and the value is strava to string value and I think it should work out of the box. What is not working right now is that I have to populate the fact table data by the connected owner. It's like this. That when I first run this, I want to say that the connected owner is the table itself. Uh, a record is the source. do this.
Archiving equals record. I don't need to do this. And I just put ink to table data factory record ID. And the funny part is part here that I have just done a dump result set and still running the same application and probably I will be able to load and update the content of the table immediately. So let's see it. I dumped the results set. I have 200 records in here. And let's see. Of course, it's ugly. Uh, the table name is actor. I get the table info which is my table info. I have the columns and everything else. Check the column count which is 4. Let's see if I can get the content. So in the attributes array, I have actually the first name, last name, last update. They are attribute definitions. I create my beautiful factory. which will now have no population code running. So I just check the first ID, which is one. I try to get I have some update issue here. Really? The value is an integer. So if I'm looking for the actors, I have <laughs> all the actors here. And this is Penelope Guinness. And this actor is Depp Spencer. And this 
actor is Cronin Penelope. Now the question is that if I run the query again, I should not create any new entities. I will not, should not create land here at all. But I should put all the data in here. So let's run the query again. And what I have here is that, yeah, I can create results of metadata and so on. And yes, the record ID is, and this is my record. And as it runs, I will not receive any further entity creation, which means I can change Deb Spencer like this is number 100 so yeah it's number 100 but I run this again and it is updated back to Deb because that was the original value Well, I think that's a nice wrap up uh, for this morning session before the lunch break. Because right now, so I have cleaned up uh, the structure of this, of course, ugly spaghetti code. And right now it's, uh, oh my God, it's about, yeah. 360 lines of code uh, separated the the foreign key info column info table info uh, classes and put the connection metadata uh, table info factory out as a member of the JDBC connector I added the shutdown hook uh, and I release safely release all the connections on on a exception or even if I forget to close the uh, connection uh, when I when I exit the application actually I do it all the time because uh, I don't have the uh, close message and I separated the functionalities. The update params function uh, collects all the uh, settings from from the dialog box, the dialog box of the of the JDBC connector. The opt create con if the connection is not set, it creates the connection and loads the metadata and these kind of things. The release con is should release the connection, but it is not doing right now. Uh, so the active in it. Uh, became smaller because it just uh, removed the the components uh, subsections of the code to separate functions. I release and I also created a process function in the past uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes that executes a query uh, coming from from a message and not only dumps the result set, so I can see the uh, answer from the database like this. This is right now the uh, result of the select all from uh, the actor table, but also uh, creates uh, the actor instances uh, and uh, you reuses the same instance if, uh, if it already exists by the identifier. Of course, right now I just guess the identifier it should be the first column, uh, but the table info will contain the primary and foreign key information. So actually I can um, update uh, the existing records. Now the only question is that I would like to, uh, so to say, export or save uh, the content of 
the database. In order to do that, I only have to set the containing unit of the newly created entities for the select to my own unit. And if I do that, after committing, I will have all the actors in my um, Sakila DB. So I can close it for now. DB connection closed. Oh, so very nice. And do the same thing again. So I update the Sakila DB unit. I mean, I load it. I should change that name. Uh, and I want to process again. But now I will not forget to call the init first. So I init uh, my JDBC connector. And then now do the process. Yeah, now the entities are created. Let it go. And now, theoretically, if I check the SecretDB unit, it contains 220 entities because I have all the actors here. And if I say commit, it should Yes, the, my entities are saved. Susan Davis, for example, is saved. So let's say that Susan Davis um, 110 will be just, sorry, I change you. And well, let's put her to the main entities, so I can just check her immediately. I do a commit again. Was it successful? Yes. 24, 24. Good. Do it again. takes a while now because it's quite hard. And we have uh, Susan here. Sorry, I changed you. And again, I call the init on the JDBC connector. Works fine. Send the message. And Susan is updated with the original database value. I think it's time to have a lunch.